चैप्टर फाइव सपरेशन ऑफ सब्सटेंसेस क्लास सिक्स सेवरल सब्सटेंसेस अराउंड अस एग्जिस्ट एज ए मिक्सचर ऑफ टू और मोर सब्सटेंसेस इफ वी हैव ए मिक्सचर ऑफ होल पीनट्स एंड कैशियूज वी कैन सपरेट देम इजीली हाउ एवर इफ द पाउडर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ पीनट्स एंड कैशियूज आर मिक्सड देन इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू सपरेट देम हेंस इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज पॉसिबल टू सपरेट मिक्सचर्स प्योर सब्सटेंस एंड मिक्सचर when you crush a sugar cube you get smaller particles of sugar if you further break these sugar particles you get even smaller particles if you continue doing this you will keep getting smaller and smaller particles of sugar thus a sugar cube is made up of only one kind of particles such a substance that is made up of only one kind of particles is called pure substance distilled water and salt are other common example of pure substance how do you make lemonade you mix together water lemon juice and sugar lemonade is therefore not a pure substance it contain three different kinds of particles water particles sugar particles and lemon juice particles such a substance that is obtained by mixing more than one kind of particles is called a mixture it is made up of two or more pure substances mixed together mixtures are everywhere around us in fact most substances around us are mixtures let us see some examples air air is a mixture of different gases such as oxygen nitrogen and carbon dioxide water vapor and some dust particles face cream it is a mixture of oil water and several chemicals soil soil is made up of many substances such as air water pebbles and dead remain of insects and plants aerated drinks it is a mixture of water sugar and carbon dioxide the different substances present in a mixture are called its components so water lemon juice and sugar are the components of lemonade the components of a mixture can be of any ratio mixtures can be solid liquids or gases they can even be a combination of these for example air is a gas an aerated drink is a liquid and soil is a solid properties of mixture some important properties of mixtures are as follows the composition of a mixture is not fixed that is the components may be present in any ratio each of the components of a mixture retain its characteristic properties the substance present in a mixture can be easily separated by some simple methods of separation for example we can easily separate a mixture of peas and peanuts mixtures do not have a fixed melting point and boiling point types of mixtures on the basis of distribution of components in a mixture they can be classified into two types homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture in a mixture of salt and water we cannot see the particles of salt with our naked eye the mixture looks the same throughout and every sip of this salty water tastes just the same it is because there is an even uniform distribution of salt and water particles throughout the mixture such a mixture in which all its component are evenly distributed throughout the mixture is called a homogeneous mixture other examples of homogeneous mixture are sugar dissolved in water juice tea and air heterogeneous mixture take a spoonful of soil and mix it in a glass of water stir the mixture and leave it undisturbed for some time you will see that the heavier particles have settled down there are more soil particles at some place and less in other places there is an uneven non uniform distribution of the soil particles in the mixture such a mixture in which its components are not distributed evenly throughout the mixture is called a heterogeneous mixture some example of heterogeneous mixture are mixture of oil and water and chocolate chip cookies separation of substances from mixture in our everyday life we often need to separate or remove certain substances from their mixture for example you might have seen your mother or grandmother collecting cream from milk they even churn the cream to separate butter from it similarly before drinking tea we separate tea leaves from it using a strainer 
separation of mixture into its component is done for the following reason to remove impurities or harmful components for example rice or pulses might contain small stones or other solid impurities which are harmful if consumed these impurities are removed to make the food safe for consumption similarly water is purified to make it fit for drinking 10 useful components crude oil is a mixture of various substances it is distilled to obtain various useful components such as petrol kerosene diesel and vaseline to obtain pure component pure metals are separated from their natural mixed forms called ores methods of separation separation of a mixture essentially means the removal of one substance from the mixture of two or more substances you can easily separate a packet of assorted candies of different flavors into individual flavors by hand picking them however separation by hand picking becomes difficult when the components are tiny and in a large quantities sometimes they may not even be visible with naked eyes generally the method of separation chosen depend upon certain properties in which the components differ from each other separation of solids from other solids we can separate a solid from mixture of solids by making use of the following properties shape size color mass magnetic properties and solubility in a liquid some common methods used for this purpose are hand picking threshing winnowing sieving and magnetic separation let us see some more methods hand picking hand picking involves picking out of substances by hand and separating them from others it is used when the component to be separated are large and easily distinguishable when unwanted materials are present in small quantities and when the shape size and color of the unwanted materials are different from those of the useful materials for example small stones broken grains husks are separated from rice wheat and pulses by hand picking method threshing after harvesting the wheat and rice crop the grains are separated from the stalks this is done by threshing threshing is the process of separating grain from the harvested stalks threshing can be done by manually beating the dry stalks on the ground or a hard surface to shake off the dry grains trampling them under the feet of animals like bullocks or using threshing machine winnowing the grain obtained after threshing contain dried husks that should be removed let us understand with the help of this activity you need some dry sand powdered dry leaves and a plate mix dry sand with powdered dry leaves on the plate and take this mixture in open ground and stand on a raised platform now hold the plate containing the mixture at your shoulder height tilt it tightly so that the mixture slide out slowly what do you observe in the above activity the powdered dry leaves are light so they blow away with the wind the sand particles are heavier so they fall down vertically forming a heap of sand near your feet this method of separation is called winnowing in this method wind is used to separate heavier particles that is sand from the lighter particles that is dried leaves winnowing is used for separating grains from husks farmers drop the mixture of grains and husks from their height the, the husk is carried by the wind and forms a heap at a small distance away the wheat grains being heavier fall almost vertically to form a separate heap sieving sieving is used for separating components of a mixture on the basis of particle sizes a sieve is usually made up of woven screen such as mesh or a net pores in a sieve allows the smaller components of the mixture to pass through and retain the large ones sieving is very commonly used at home uh, to separate bran uh, from the wheat flour sieving is also used for separating gravel from sand magnetic separation some substances are attracted to a magnet such substances are called magnetic substances in a mixture where one of the component is magnetic in nature and the other is non magnetic the component can be separated using a magnet for example iron is a magnetic while sand is non magnetic
so we can use a magnet to separate iron fillings mixed in sand the iron fillings get attracted to the magnet and stick to it and while the sand particles are left behind separation of solids from liquids solid substances may either be soluble or insoluble in a liquid for example sugar is a soluble in water whereas chalk powder is not different methods are used for separating soluble and insoluble substances from their respective solution separating insoluble solids from liquids solids such as chalk powder sand and dust particles are insoluble in water particles of such solids can be separated from their solution using one of the following method sedimentation and decantation filtration and loading sedimentation and decantation this method is used for separating insoluble substances that are heavier than water when such a mixture is left undisturbed for some time the heavier particles settle at the bottom of the container the process of settling down of heavier insoluble components such as mud is a mixture is called sedimentation the particles that settle down form the sediment the, the clear liquid that remains above the sediment is called supernatant the supernatant is carefully poured out into another container without disturbing the sediment this process of pouring out the supernatant is slowly into another container such that the sediments are not disturbed is known as decantation let us see in activity mix sawdust salt to make a mixture put the mixture into a beaker and add water to it now fold the filter paper into the cone shape stir the mixture with a glass rod pass the mixture through the cone shaped filter paper in the funnel record your observation filtration the filter paper has a fine pores it does not allow the sawdust to pass through it as a result it accumulates on the filter paper the water and the dissolved salt passes through the filter paper it gets collected in the beaker placed below the funnel this method of separating insoluble components from the mixture using the filter is called filtration in this method a solution is passed through the filter the filter allows the liquid to pass through and retains the solid particles the solid particles retained by filter are known as residue the clear liquid collected after filtering process is called filtrate the filter used may be the filter paper a fine muslin cloth a fine mesh unglazed earthenware or other porous materials keep in mind that size of pores in the filter should be smaller than the size of solid particles being separated loading muddy water contains some very tiny fine particles these fine particles either stay suspended in water or take a long time to settle down when alum is added at the heavier particles of dissolved alum settle on the top of these fine particles this makes the fine particles heavy which then settle down quickly thus adding of alum loads the mud particles and speed up sedimentation this process is called loading let us see an activity to obtain clear water from muddy water pour muddy water into a beaker add a small piece of alum that is fitkari into it and stir the mixture with a glass rod now leave the mixture undisturbed for some time you will see that the mud particles suspended in water have settled down faster than as usual you can now transfer the clear water into another beaker separating soluble solids from their solutions evaporation it is a method used to recover a dissolved solid component from a solution this method utilizes the difference in the boiling points of different components of the mixture in this process the solution is heated this causes the liquid to evaporate leaving behind the solid component the common salt is mostly produced naturally from the sea water by this method the sea water is collected in shallow ponds water evaporates in the heat of the sun and salt is left over let us perform a simple activity to obtain the dissolved salt from water activity to separate salt from water pour a glass of water in a pan and add 3 to 4 tablespoon of salt in it stir to mix the salt completely heat the mixture on a gas burner soon you will see that water changing into water vapor when all the water has evaporated what do you notice there is left behind in the pan taste and find out it will be salt 
separating soluble liquids from their solution distillation it is a method of obtaining a pure liquid from a solution in this method the solution is heated as the temperature reaches to the boiling point of the liquid it start evaporating the liquid are passed through a cool condenser as the vapors cool they condense to form the pure liquid the pure liquid is so obtained is known as distillate distilled water is also obtained by this method separation of mixtures of two liquids milk and water mix well with each other such liquid that mix well with each other are called miscible liquids on the other hand oil and water do not mix with each other they form two separate layers the oil layer floats on the top of the water layer the two liquids do not mix even on vigorous stirring such liquid that do not mix with each other are called immiscible liquids separation of immiscible liquids two immiscible liquids can be separated by using a separating funnel in this method the mixture that is a mixture of oil and water is taken in a separating funnel and left undisturbed for some time the heavier liquid that is water collects at the bottom of layer and the lighter liquid that is oil that will be collected at the top layer the beaker is placed below the separating funnel uh, to collect the liquid the stopper of the separating funnel is opened to let down the bottom layer of the liquid to flow out the stopper is turned off just when the top layer of liquid reaches to the stopper separation of miscible liquid miscible liquids can be separated by the method of distillation in this method the mixture of miscible liquids are heated at different temperatures the liquid with lower boiling point gets evaporated first it vap vapors are passed through a condenser here the vapors are cooled to convert into liquid form the other liquid remain in the flux distilled water alcohol petrol diesel gasoline kerosene paraffin and many other liquids are produced commercially by the same method application of method of separation we will separate a mixture of salt sand and water using the process of sedimentation and decantation filtration evaporation and condensation sometimes we need to use different separation methods to separate a mixture of soluble and insoluble substances from a solvent such as water activity to separate a mixture of various separation methods method mix water sand and salt in a beaker sedimentation and decantation leave the beaker undisturbed for some time when the sand particles have settled down at the bottom of the beaker carefully decant the and clear water in another beaker filtration pass the decanted water through a filter paper the sand is the separated from the rest of the mixture evaporation now transfer the decanted liquid into a kettle and heat it water start evaporating for to form steam that is water vapor condensation take a metal plate and place some ice on it using a tong hold the plate just above the spout of kettle when the steam comes in contact with cold metal plate it condenses and forms water drops collect the water drops falling on the plate in a clean beaker absorb the water and compare it with a mixture of you initially had you will find that the water is very clean after all the water has evaporated salt is left behind in the kettle how is drinking water obtained the water supplied to our houses is first treated through several separation process to make it clean and fit for consumption the steps given below are followed to clean the water the first step is removal of solid impurities by the process of sedimentation and decantation sometimes loading is done to speed up sedimentation second the decanted water is then passed through the sand filters to further purify it third finally some amount of disinfectant that is chlorine is added to kill the germs water a universal solvent water is capable of dissolving a variety of different substances therefore it is called universal solvent it means that wherever water goes either through the air the ground or through our bodies it takes along valuable chemicals minerals and nutrients dissolve in it this property of water is important for every living organisms on earth some of the crucial functions of water are as follows our body cannot absorb food if it is not dissolved in water simpler substances that are produced during digestion 
are transported uh, to and absorbed by different parts of the body through water. Water helps in the transport of vitamins and minerals in our body. Water is also used as a solvent uh, to transport waste and unnecessary materials out of the body such as excess salt. Plants take up vital nutrients, minerals and salts from the soil through water. For aquatic plants and animals, water is essential as gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide are dissolved in water. Aquatic organisms use these gases for sustaining life. Without water, there would be no life. Thank you very much.